This is FE Peer Review. The date is February the 9th, 2022. Sunpath Diagrams. Flat Earth Intel's Corey Kell could learn a thing or two. Before we get started, I just wanted to give you all a brief announcement. I am going to be occupied with some other projects probably for the next two months or so, so it's very possible I won't be able to produce any new videos until the end of March. But uh, I wanted to also say that a number of you have sent me some very interesting emails with ideas and resources, uh, suggestions, and I'm very interested in all of that, and I very much intend to pursue those ideas. Some of it may involve some collaboration, and I look forward to that. Unfortunately, it's just that there are a couple of other things happening at the moment that are going to have to cause me to take a little time away. But I promise when I get back, I will dive right in with all those other interesting projects you guys have suggested. Thanks so much. Now on with the show. So when I was a student at university studying architecture, I have degrees in both architecture and structural engineering, but within the architecture program one of the things that we studied was designing buildings for natural light, to take advantage of natural light for all the benefits that that brings. And at that time when I was a student, one of the big popular architects on the subject of natural light was Le Corbusier. And here you see a sketch by Le Corbusier showing sun angles and how to design the shape of the building to take advantage of sun angles. So sun angles, sun paths, these were fundamental to the training of a young architect, and that remains so today. It is still the case in architecture schools. This is one form that a sun path diagram takes, and this is probably the most common form that it takes. We are going to be looking at something like this at the end of this video. We're going to be building towards this from a three-dimensional model to this two-dimensional diagram. Very simply, it shows you an observer at a specific location at the center of this circle here. So this diagram applies to 32 degrees north latitude. It's specific to that one latitude. And at 32 degrees north latitude, with south being down on the diagram, north being up, we're looking in plan view, you might say. We're looking from above down on a person standing at the center, the center of the circle. Each of these lines that's sort of going across the image represents the path of the sun through the sky. And then the concentric circles represent solar altitudes, and the lines converging at the center of the circle represent solar azimuths. This is not done in the conventional way in that they've put zero azimuth at south and then 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees going around the circle. But that's a convention that architects often use because you sort of focus your design. You think of your design in terms of south. And so it's, your, it's the amount that you diverge from south that you're concerned about and designing for. So that's one type of solar path diagram we're going to look at. This is another very similar idea here. It is as if you're standing in that circle looking up at the sky and these same lines, black lines and this red lines, indicate for each of the months of the year and each of, and every hour of the day where in the sky the sun is located. So you could say if you want to know at 10 a.m. on the 1st of April, 10 a.m. the 1st of April, Reading off to the side here, the sun is at an altitude of about 48 degrees and facing due south, it's about 52 degrees east of due south. So that's how this diagram could be used. This sun path diagram is not really a diagram intended for designing things. It's just more representational to give an idea of how the sun moves through the sky. So we see, if we look at this center ring here, that indicates the path of the sun on the equinox, rising due east, reaching noon, and then setting due west. And in the winter we find that it follows a path that's south of east at sunrise, and in the summer it follows a path that's north of east in the sunrise. This would be 
working for a northern hemisphere location. All right, we're going to move into a little SketchUp 3D model I made that shows you how to create these sun paths. And we're going to use this to build towards checking Kabul, which was the location that Corey Kell used. When you heard me say Corey Kell, you might have thought, oh, that's such old news. Well, actually, this video has been sitting in my in-progress folder for a month or so, and I decided it would be a good idea to tie up loose ends today so that I can move on with other projects. So this, what you see here, was from an earlier video. I'll put a link in the description, and it was a model showing the parallel path of sun rays and how they reach the Earth at different locations and the angles involved. Consequently, the angles involved from that. Well, this is sort of like the Earth and the sun rays seen from outside. But in the model we're going to look at now, after this, it's going to be how things are perceived from the ground by the person who happens to be at this location here, for example. So we're going to be going from an outside look to an inside look. So we're going to be building up a little diagram here. We're going to make one of these sun path diagrams, and it has two components. There's the reference plane, the, the surface on which the person is standing. I've got that here in this circle, and I've marked the four cardinal directions, as well as 45 degree angles between. And then there's the sun, and we see the sun move through the sky at a consistent 15 degrees per hour arcing across the sky. It varies ever so slightly when it's close to the horizon due to refraction effects, but 24 hours later, that sun is back to almost exactly the same spot it was in 24 hours before. Over the course of the year, of course, it's gradually drifting northward and southward in the sky. So day to day, there's also a very, very slight change. But we can consider basically that as we see the sun from the surface of the Earth, it appears to move in a circle across the sky. So this ring I've got here, this ring I have divided into segments. I've made large tick marks every 45 degrees. So there's one, there's one, there's one. And then for a portion of the ring, I've made tick marks every five degrees, which represents 20 minutes of time passing. And then on either side of this, these two tick marks, I've made one degree marks, just so that we can read more easily, visually, the angles when we're getting close to that. From this location, from this line to that line would be 45 degrees. So when we talk about the sun rotating, when we talk about any object rotating, it's a mistake to say that something is rotating around a point. I say it's a mistake in that it is ambiguous, and we could be clear. We don't need to be ambiguous. So we could talk about the sun rotating, appearing to rotate around a person on the ground. But what does that actually mean? So let me show you. I'm going to make this sun rotate around this point here, which is the center point of this circle where our person is standing. Right there. There it goes. It's rotating around the point, but it's not rotating around the circle we had intended. Another example, we could be saying it's rotating around that point. And if you look over here at the sun, that little yellow circle there, you'll see it's rotating all right, but again, not the way we had intended. What we had intended was to indicate that the sun is rotating on a path around this circle. So when we talk about rotation, we need to be talking about an axis of rotation rather than a point of rotation. The point may be here, but the axis is actually a line that's perpendicular to the plane of rotation that we're concerned with. You see that there? So the axis of rotation is, is a key concept we have to have clear in our minds here. As the sun rotates 
moves across the sky in an arc, describing a circle 15 degrees every hour, there's an axis associated with that path because it's a circular path. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put that sun path onto our ground plane here. And I've got it flush with the ground plane. And there's our axis of rotation of the sun, which also happens to be the zenith of the person standing at the center of this circle here. They're congruent. This is the diagram, the sun path diagram, for the North Pole or the South Pole. And we see that sun rotate around that axis at 15 degrees per hour, making its way around over the course of 24 hours. And as we see it here, that sun is directly on the ground plane, which means it's at the horizon. So we are seeing the sun path diagram for the North Pole or the South Pole on the equinox, either equinox, where the sun traces a path along the horizon for a 360 degree circle. We're going to take a look at a brief video clip of that, courtesy of Wolfie6020, who uh, he also got it from someone else. I will put the links in my description. And we'll go take a look at that now. This is from the channel of Wolfie6020, and he got the video from a person named Robert Schwartz, and there's a link. I'll provide both links in the description. I've turned the sound off, and we're not going to watch the entire video. What it is is just a few days shy of the equinox. The sun is a little bit above the horizon. If it were the equinox, it would be right on the horizon. So it's a few days off from the equinox, and it was a five-day observation. We're only going to look at a brief clip. We don't need to see the whole thing. We've, we've got this little building here right in front of the sun, so we're going to just let it run, and I'm going to keep the sound off, and we can watch that sun, and we'll see that it's not going up or down. It's just going right along the horizon there in a full circle. Like I said, this video is a five-day time lapse. Elsewhere on YouTube, I found a 30-day time lapse that's quite fun, but we don't need that for this video for our purposes today. And we're coming back to our starting point. There it is. And we're back around to our starting point. So that was one day. So that shows you a direct physical observation taken by human beings of what the sun path is at the South Pole on a day very close to the equinox. And that's what our diagram indicated just now. So our diagram matches what is actually seen in the world for that particular location on that particular day. So we've seen the two poles, north and south, and how the sun skirts the horizon. And we've put our diagram to match that. Now we're going to move to the equator. What we see here is a video taken in the town of Quitzato in the country of Ecuador. It is right on the equator, this town. And on the equator, they have a monument, a kind of a hollow column with doors. And you can step inside there and look straight up. And what happens is on the equinox, the sun is directly overhead, and it brings the light straight down inside there. And if you're outside, what you see is the shadow of this column gradually moving towards the, I'll get it running here, gradually moving towards the column. So the sun's shining this way down on it. And then at noon, the shadow is directly, basically it disappears. We're getting close to noon. The shadow's here now. Getting closer. And then at noon, the sunlight comes right down here and lights the inside of this hollow column. Now we see the sunlight coming down inside the column there. See the floor lit up. So, And then gradually the shadow is going to emerge on the other side. So that's Ecuador on the equinox, Quetzato, Ecuador. And the sun is at zenith angle, 90 degrees direct overhead. So we're going to put that into our model now. 
So from the poles, we are now going to move to the equator. And what we're going to do here is take this ring, this sun path ring, and it was in the horizontal position there, going around the horizon. We're simply going to rotate it up 90 degrees, which puts the sun at the zenith directly overhead of our observer, rising in the east, passing through the zenith, and setting in the west, which is what we observe directly of the sun's path, direct observation, when a person is on the equator on the equinox. So that's our sun path for the equator equinox position. The next step is to look at the solstices. And for that, what we know through again through direct observation is that the sun will be in the northern hemisphere summer will be 23.43 degrees north of the equator and in the southern hemisphere summer it'll be 23.43 south of the equator. So I'm going to rotate a copy of this around the east-west axis 23.43 degrees and that gives us the position of the sun in the northern hemisphere summer as seen from our person on the equator. So our person is standing here and instead of looking directly up, they're looking to the north. So the next step from there in building our sun path diagram, well, we're going to do the same towards the south. We're going to move along here. I've made a copy of it. We have our little sun there. We take that sun path, that, that ring the sun is going around at 15 degrees per hour. We move the entire ring to the new position, and that is this ring, Northern Hemisphere Summer, and this ring, Southern Hemisphere Summer. And it's exactly identical to the equinox ring, except that it's shifted. Now, it's not just shifted north. You'll see that it's also shifted. Being at an angle, it's dropped a little bit. So having dropped, the day is a little bit shorter than it is on the equinox. That gives us our sun path diagrams at the equator for the solstices and the equinoxes. And all of this was derived from and can be checked against direct observation. A person at the equator on those days can look up and see whether this is correct or not. So now next step takes us to Kabul which is at 34.5 degrees. And when you see it here, I'm going to show you how I made this. I'll just back up a little bit. We were in the equator position. I made a copy of the equator one. There it is. And Kabul, being at 34.5 degrees, we can know through direct observation that the sun on the equinox is not directly overhead like it is on the equator. Rather, it's towards the south, 34.5 degrees. So we can take this entire assembly of sun paths, tilt it 34.5 degrees, rotating it around that east-west axis. And now we see that on the equinox, the sun rises due east, sets due west, and at noon, it's 34.5 degrees down from the zenith. That's the summer position. That's the equinox position. Winter position, 23.43 lower. Summer position, 23.43 higher. Since Kabul lies outside of the tropics, the summer position is still not quite reaching the zenith. The zenith line would be there. But it's very high up in the sky. So that gives us our sun path diagram for Kabul for solstices and equinoxes. Now let's take a look at this from top down and I'm going to turn perspective off so we're looking at an orthographic view. And what we see are these three arcs here. Do they look familiar? They should, because they are the same arcs we saw on the sun path diagram at the start of this video. 
to remember this. So there's our summer solstice line. There's our, where is it? There it is. There's our equinox line going from due east to due west. And there's our winter solstice line. Now this shows the in-between in months as well. We haven't done that on the, on the model, and I'm not going to because it just makes it a little bit cluttered. But that's what we're seeing here, the summer line, the equinox, and the winter line. So what we could do, if we wanted to fully recreate that diagram, I'm going to turn off some of the excess here. I'm going to get rid of our suns. Just turn them, all, turn them off and get rid of these little lines. We don't need them anymore. What we could do is simply take project, like we were just looking at it from above. We could project a line from this would be the summer noon position straight down onto our ground surface. And this is going to be like a sheet of paper. This ground surface is like a sheet of paper that we're going to print out. So now we know that that's the spot that marks noon on the summer solstice. Now I'm going to do one that goes in 11 o'clock position. Here's the 11 o'clock position. And then here's the 10 o'clock position. Might as well go all the way. 9, 8, thank you for your patience, we won't do them all, but this is a good one to see here. Okay, so that was 6 o'clock, so now we see that the sun is above the horizon before 6 o'clock. So the day is more than 12 hours long, which is what we expect in the summertime. And we have a whole little series of lines that we can connect. And then that gives us all kinds of other things. So here's our person standing at the middle. South is towards the upper right of my screen here. We can get solar azimuth angles by measuring. I'm going to rotate that so that it intersects. And that gives us the azimuth. In this case, it's 56.3. I'm reading off of the uh, little indicator on the, on the right, which you can't see. But 56.3 degrees off south as azimuth. That's 76.9, so forth. We can, we can just carry that through each one and get azimuth. We could create a con series of concentric circles to get our solar altitudes, which is what we saw here with these concentric circles. That gives us the altitudes. And it would be where this point, where this line crosses that circle, would give us the altitude information. So that's how the sun path diagram goes together. The next thing we're going to look at is the 45 degree sector test key item, which Kel said that at three hours before or three hours after solar noon, you cannot have a larger than 45 degree angle. We've disproved that a number of ways, but we're going to get the measurement right off of this diagram. That's our next step. So finally, the moment you've all been waiting for when we measure the actual sun angle and refute once again Corey Kell's false assertion about 45 degrees. So I've just turned my little sun on and I wanted you to see that I've made a copy over here at the 9 a.m. position. We're going to look at the angle of the 9 a.m. sun, three hours before solar noon. We're going to look at the solar altitude and the azimuth. I'm going to go ahead and turn the suns off because it's a little easier to do the work with them out of the way. I'm also going to point out that at the bottom right corner of the screen, you'll see it says measurements, and then there's a little box there. When we get to doing the angles, that's where the angles are going to show up, and we'll be able to read the angle there and see if it is greater than 45 degrees. So remember the sun positions. There's one here at noon. It's got the full tick mark, and there's one at the 9 a.m., which has got the full tick mark. So there and there. All right, so what I'm going to do is our observer is at the center of the circle here. 
I'm going to draw a line from that point to the sun position at noon. And I'm doing it with a dashed line so we can see it a little more easily. So at noon, the observer looks along that line to see the sun. Three hours before that, the observer would be looking from the same location to this tick mark over here. And that's the 9 a.m. position. That's three hours earlier. So we want to get both the altitude and the azimuth of that angle. He doesn't really discuss azimuth lines, but I'm going to go ahead and put it in because it's useful. So I'm going to come straight down to our surface. And I'm going to close that triangle, bring it back to the observer, and that's going to create a face. That will make it a little bit easier for us to measure the angles. So what we see here is that at 9 a.m., the observer is looking almost due east and up that angle to the sun's position. So what is this angle here? Is this more than 45 degrees or less than 45 degrees? And now we're going to see what happens here. We're going to take this line that I've just highlighted, and we're going to use the rotate command. We're going to be rotating perpendicular to this face so we can get this angle. We're going to be doing it around this point. So we're rotating this line. And if you look in the bottom right corner, you'll see it says angle. And as I rotate up, that number increases. It says 33, and I continue up 40 until it snaps to the line. We're on the line now, and it says approximately 46.3 degrees. It says approximately because it's only showing it to one decimal place. It has the exact measurement, but it only displays to one decimal. Well, that's more than 45 degrees. So that's how it works on the sun path diagram. And once again, we see that Corey Kell is wrong. I guess that's what the whole video is about in the end. But I thought it was kind of interesting to see another way of drawing out the geometry of sun path diagrams. Now, Corey Kell would do well to study these diagrams. They are used on a daily basis by people who design photovoltaic installations. I took a semester of photovoltaic classes, which was very interesting. And we used uh, this exact approach for finding the optimal orientation of our solar panels. So this is something that's done every day by people all over the world in a variety of professions. And Kel would do himself well to talk to a few of these people. Some of them actually know things he doesn't. And I hope some of this is new to you and you found it all interesting. As I mentioned at the beginning, I'm going to be gone for a few weeks. Probably won't be back at this until the end of March. Hope you're all enjoying these videos and don't all drift away. I will be back. On that note, I will ask you to click that like button and subscribe. And uh, have a great February and March. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.